Hi everyone, this is a review video of the first graders dealing with the devil, the triumph and tragedy with the, of the IBM business with the Nazi government. So continue. Here, IBM established a strong financial relationship with Germany, and on July 1st, 1937, Watson received a German eagle from Hitler due to work in bettering economic relations. So IBM just had more stronger relationship with Germany, and July 1st, Dr. Watson received a German eagle. This is an award from German government. So Dr. Watson received an award for making a betterment of the German economy. So the medal was titled the Merit Cross of the German Eagle with a Star, and was the second most prestigious decoration a foreigner might receive. So the medal's name was the Merit Cross, the German Eagle with the Star, and this was the second most prestigious decoration, second most prestigious, prestigious award a foreigner might receive from German government. And in a ceremonial speech upon bestowal of German Eagle, Nazi economic minister Schacht spoke of Watson. Okay? So the bestowal here it means to give something. To give something. So when Nazi government, when they give an award to Dr. Watson, the Nazi economic minister Schacht talked to Watson that in your work for the International Chamber of Commerce, you have also worked for Germany. So International Chamber of Commerce is something like Ministry of Economics in Germany. So Schacht told Watson that you worked for the economy of Ministry of Economy in Germany, and by doing so, you also worked for entire German country. And Watson delightfully responded to Hitler, stating, Before I leave Berlin, I wish to express my pride in and deep gratitude for the high honor I received through order with which you honored me. So, Dr. Watson also, in return, he happily answered to Hitler, saying that, Dr. Watson wanted to say, before he left Berlin, he wished to express his proud. He, is, he feels proud to receive an award from German government, and he, ho he also wants to express his deep gratitude. Gratitude is like thankfulness. So Dr. Watson feels thankful for the German government for giving him this award. And this fortified the relationship between IBM and Germany in time for 1939 census. So here the fortified means enhance. Right? And also like made it make it stronger. So this award ceremony made the relationship between IBM and Germany even stronger than before for 1939 census. So as of January 30th, 1939, anti-Semitism cancerously disseminated the German culture body. So anti-Semitism is like a discrimination. Discrimination against Jews and disseminate disseminate means spread so this anti-semitism like spread into a German culture body just like a cancer so it's, it's spread widely and aggressively into German society and after the ratification of additional law Restricting Jews, the event of Kristallnacht and Hitler promulgating the annihilation of the Jewish race, IBM resumed business with the Third Reich. So it seems that uh, Hitler he ratified more additional law in order to prohibiting and restricting Jewish people from having proper public life. So Hitler 
passed more supplementary additional law and he threw a party, he threw an event called Kristallnacht. So Kristallnacht is German language and in English it's something like Kristallnacht. Okay. Kristallnacht. It's Kristallnacht. So in this event, Hitler promulgating. So promulgating is like proclaiming. Proclaiming. Or like announcing the annihilation. Annihilation usually it means like total removal. So on this event, Hitler he announced the total removal of the Jewish race. Then IBM resume business. Resume means begin again, right? So IBM begin its business with the third Reich again. In order to carry out genocide, Hitler needed more information about the German population. So it seems that Hitler needed more detailed information about the population. So on May 17, 1939, Hitler implemented a census intended to find detailed information on the ancestry, religious faith, and material positions of all residents. So on this day, May 17th, Hitler began to begin its census and asking people about this question like who are their ancestors? Where these ancestors where their ancestors come from? Whether they come from Germany or whether they came from Israel, whether they came from like Poland and France. So they asked about where these ancestors came from, and also they asked what kind of religion these citizens, German citizens, have, and they also asked a question about like their possessions and assets, like how how much money they have, how much land they own, and how, if they own a house or not, and how much property they own. So all this kind of detailed information. And around 750,000 voluntary census proctors surveyed 80 million German citizens asking whether they are pure Aryan blood or to which nationality do they feel they belong to. So there were like 750,000 voluntary census proctors. So these census proctors are like some, something like uh, supervisors. Supervisor or actual people who conducting the census. So these 750,000 voluntarily people, they visiting 80, 80 million German citizens in their house and home, and they asked about the several questions to these citizens. For instance, like whether they belong to a pure Aryan blood. So these Aryan blood are like German citizens. Okay? So they they ask if they are they have a pure Aryan blood, pure Aryan like heritage, and also ask citizens which country they feel like they belong to. They do you feel like you belong to Germany? You feel like you belong to Israel? You feel like, you feel like you belong to like Belgium, France? So these uh, census proctors ask around people about their nationalities. So the information was immediately shipped to Dehomek to be processed by D11 punch card machines. So after the proctors, they get this information from each citizen, they send this information directly to Dehomek so the Dehomek company can process this information into the computer. So the sizable 1939 census overtook any job the home ec had completely before. So the sizable here, sizable means like huge. So huge 1939 census overtook, overtook means exceed. It exceed or it go beyond. Go beyond any the home ec job that have ever been, ever done. So the 1939 census was the biggest project Dehomek have ever conducted before. 
Initially, the Home Act was punching 450,000 cars a day, but they slowly adapted to a rate of 1 million cars daily. So initially, the Home Act processed like 450,000 cars a day, but even gradually, they become faster and it was able to process 1 million cars per day. So along with the 80, 000, 80 million punch cards needed to be processed for each citizen, supplementary card was required for more detail on ethnicity, educational, and financial background for each resident. So it seems that the entire number of German population was 80 million at this time, 1930. So along with those 80 million cards that they need to process for each citizen, German officials, German government, they need supplementary additional card for more details, such as like ethnicity. So ethnicity, is, as you guys know, is a race, right? So we need information about the race of the citizen and educational status and financial background. So they, German government needed more additional punch card. So the head of each German family received one supplementary punch card resulting in 25 million cards. So the mother, mother or father of a family, they received one additional card which contains more detailed information about their family members and it reached, it reached a 25 million card. So the home company had really like uh, many, uh, so many cards to process, but with IBM efficiency, the Home Act was able to reach Hitler's November, November deadline. It seems that Hitler gave German government a deadline in November to finish in this process by the end of November. And since IBM the Home Act could process information so efficiently, German government could finish this process by the end of the deadline, Hitler's deadline. So the information IBM elicited from the 1939 census would aid Hitler in the preliminary stages of concentration, deportation, attempted annihilation of Jewish people. So, elicit, it means to get. So, this information that IBM get from this 1939 census, it would aid Hitler. So, aid here, aid means help, right? So, this information would help Hitler preparing for the concentration. So concentration is like a making concentration camp. So these German officers will bring all the German population, put them into a camp, concentration camp. So here, in the terrible condition, in terrible facility, Jewish population are waiting to be killed. And deportation is like expel, right? Or kicking out. So... Now Hitler used this information to expel some of the Jewish population out of the Germany and attempted the annihilation. So he also uh, prepared to like total removal using this information that he got from IBM. Okay, and the 19, 1939 census counted a diminishing population of 330,892 German Jews to whom the Nuremberg Law applicable. So the German Jews were not considered as a German citizen, rather they were considered as a Jewish population. So these 330,000 people were to be killed by the German government. And these people, to these people, the Nuremberg Law were applicable. So in pursuit of the final solution, Hitler established five death camps and 23 main concentration camps between 1939 and 1940. So I guess the final solution is the name of Hitler's plan of annihilation of Jewish population. So in order to execute the final solution, Hitler, he constructed five death camps and 23 main concentration camps between 1939 and 1940. Among these camps was Auschwitz, responsible for the deaths of 960,000 Jews. So, as you might have heard about the name, the notorious Auschwitz was one of those uh, camps, and this Auschwitz is responsible for killing 960,000 Jewish population. 
and almost every concentration camp utilize a Horaris Aptilum Gehomek machine, informally called the death calculator. So Horaris Aptilum was the model, computer model made by the Homemade machine, and it, its nickname was the death calculator. So upon entering a concentration camp, a prisoner of design designated a five-digit Polaris code, which was tattooed onto their body. So when a person get caught by German government, and this person enter into a concentration camp, the prisoner he was not called up, called by his name anymore. He was given a five-digit numbers upon entering the camp. And he was called upon by these five-digit numbers instead of his name. And the number was tattooed into their body. The Holocaust survivor Mike Vogel recalled, there was one person who'd rubbed a little piece of dirty alcohol on their arm, and the other, other one had a needle with an ink well, and he would do the numbering. So the pers this person, Mike Vogel, he is a survivor of a Holocaust, and he remembered what he go through in this concentration camp. And according to Mike, there is a person, upon entering the camp, there is a person who would rub the alcohol on your arm, and there is the other person who is carrying a needle with ink at the top, on, on the tip of the ink, and the other person would tattoo the numbers into your arm. So my number was 65316. So the Michael Borger's number back then was 65316. And the number was paired with the Holoris punch card, which cataloged information about the prisoner's ethnicity, age, sexuality, physical ability, and ultimately form of departure. So with that five-digit number, these uh, camp managers, they coupled the number with a Holoris card, and they met, matched, they tried to catalog, they tried to organize this information about the prisoner's ethnicity, age, and sexuality, physical ability, and form of departure. So according to this information, the, these officers in the camp, they categorized this card into different group, and they put, them, put the people into different group, and they decide how, how to depart these people, meaning that how to kill or deport, kick them out of this country. So Rudolf Kahn, a prisoner at the Westerbork camp, worked in a labor service office. So this person named Rudolf Kahn, he used to work inside the camp for labor service office. And Kahn witnessed the IBM machinery being operated. So in the camp, he witnessed how IBM like, operate this machine and how, how IBM categorize and group these people according to punch card numbers. And he saw how IBM managed to decode the algorithm. So decode like means decipher or interpret. So came witnessed how IBM interpret those uh, numbers according to its algorithm. So for instance, columns three and four stated reason for delivery. So I guess you have a, this kind of table. Table. You have a really like this uh, paper which contains how to interpret this number. And the third and fourth column. So I guess you have a lot of like information in different columns. And column one, column two, and column three and column four. So we have a column three and column four. So this column three and four state reason for delivery. So on this table, this uh, information, column three and column four, explain why this Jewish person was captivated, why they were captured in the camp. And code five designated a Jew. And you have code column five 
and this uh, this column designated the Jewish population, and while code two signified a homosexual. So you have code two. This code two it contains information if that about the homosexuality. So let's say a person, Jewish person, is homosexual. He was given in number two. Okay, and column thirty four entail the reason for departure. So I guess you have so many different columns and column 34 you have column 34 this column explains how how departure means kill or or deport how how you kill this person or how you will deport this person out of the country and the egregious code 6 stated special handling so egregious is like notorious or very very famous in bad way. So this egregious code six was like special handling. So if you get a code six, this person supposed to get a more even terrible death, I guess. So this is how far we covered this time. So again, you guys did a good job participating, and thank you for listening the video okay thank you good job everybody see you next time bye bye